it's a case that has polarized opinion right across the province. Last month, Gerald Stanley was acquitted of second degree murder in the killing of Bushi, a 22 year old Cree man. Justice for Bolton! Sparking anger and charges of racial discrimination. The words racism, the words reconciliation being talked about a lot. And aggravating tensions between Indigenous and non Indigenous communities in rural Saskatchewan. It's sad, but it's a different world. It's a different world. And, and people, people are afraid. This week, CBC News revealed the findings of its own investigation of the case, speaking with several experts who were asked to review the evidence and testimony. It's, it's unacceptable. Cases like this really frustrate me. Is that acceptable? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That should have been protected, that scene. Those experts agreed that errors were made, but wouldn't say if those errors could have affected the outcome of the trial. Producer Chelsea Gomez was part of the CBC investigation. Okay, Chelsea, this is a case that has seen uh, Canadians examine the court system, examine relations between Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities, but you look specifically at the police investigation. Why? Well, what we were finding, it, we were all following this case really closely when it was going through the trial, and at, in the aftermath of it, you saw a lot of outrage and frustration over the jury selection process. It sort of became the main focus. but. What we were hearing was there were some people that were very concerned about the actual RCMP investigation that produced the evidence that could be presented at trial. And so um, they had some very serious concerns saying that regardless of what the jury makeup was ever going to be, the verdict could have still been the same because the investigation was flawed from the beginning. So we started looking into that. As this moved forward, when did you know you were onto something? Well, when we had compiled all of our concerns and we brought it to our experts, um, namely, for example, what had happened within the first few hours after Colton was shot, which um, to us really stood out in the fact that the RCMP never covered the vehicle, the, the vehicle where he was shot, and they left the door wide open, and the, there was a rainstorm coming in, and so, you know, it washed away. There was testimony in trial that there was 44 millimeters of rain that washed away all this evidence, and the car was so soaked it had to be dried out for an entire day before the police could process it. And th this is evidence of of blood spatter, right? Real forensic evidence exactly. on that open door of that truck. Yeah, it was. it's blood splatter. It was also gunpowder residue that could have been left on the truck. Um, and so when we presented that to our experts, they were appalled, really. They were really, really shocked. They couldn't believe that that was what was happening because that, that should not happen in an adequate investigation. So they were really shocked. And then when we started to get into other issues like the blood spatter, what was available for the forensics teams, they all had questions. So. Still, going after the police, second guessing the police effectively on a major criminal investigation is a tall order. Where do you go to find those voices to bring that criticism? It is hard to question police because it's such a very specialized um, niche industry, right? I mean, we don't have ins and outs. We don't know how homicide investigations really work from the inside out. So what was important for us first and foremost is that we consulted with people that did. So anybody that we spoke to about this case, they had decades of experience, either as homicide investigators themselves or as forensics analysts who had worked really directly with police and police investigations. And so that for us was really important. But on top of that, another thing that was very important because this is such a hot topic and a very polarizing topic for many people we wanted to make sure that our experts were very distanced from the case and we didn't we wanted to make sure that the people we consulted with didn't already have biases or hadn't been following the case closely from the beginning with their own ideas about what should have been done so luckily we did find these people who were very experienced and who when we, some of them when we presented them with the case they really had to go and do a little bit of research to find out what the case was because they were in other provinces and they hadn't been following it so that for us was really really important. Is there a second tier of this investigation going down, down the road to look at the not only the police methods but the police attitude which might be an even harder thing to get to? It's definitely something that we're considering um, with the recent decision from the um, CRCC, the federal watchdog, to actually investigate the conduct of the RCMP officers that were involved, it's something that we are gonna, we are gonna seriously consider to see if there's anything else that um, needs to be discussed here. An issue that many would argue is long overdue. <laughs> Chelsea Gomez, thanks for your time. Thanks, John.